Hello everyone, um, I'm Charles-Edouard Batiché and I'm going to share the news today uh, about the Kiverno project. So this is a um, very exciting opportunity for me to be there for a couple of reasons. The first one is that the Kiverno project evolved a lot during the past years and we have a lot of things to cover because we created new projects, we expanded the way Kiverno works and the landscape we can address with Kiverno. And another reason to be excited is that I'm also a French guy and I used to live in Paris for quite some years. So yeah, that takes very special to me uh, to be there today. So let's start, and I'm with a colleague today. So Shooting, can you start presenting yourself and tell us uh, what Kiverno is? Sure. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Shooting Zhao, and I'm a Kiverno maintainer, and we both work at Namada. So the most common question we got from our community is that, you know, what does Kiverno mean? Well, it's actually a Greek word which means govern. And Kiverno starts as a policy engine which helps secure, automate, and enforce compliance of your Kubernetes clusters. And it's currently in incubating status. We have expanded Kiverno beyond just Kubernetes. So really everything is around policy as code. So Shao, what does the Kiverno community look like and who are using Kiverno? Okay, so Kiverno has a great and large community. Uh, we have more than 3,000 Slack members today in our Slack channel, making it the second most active Slack channel in the Kubernetes workspace. We also have more than 300 contributors and 5,000 stars on GitHub. And the project was actually adopted by large companies like Spotify, LinkedIn, and Yahoo. So it's more and more used by large companies. The project addresses uh, security enforcement, and that's the most uh, recurrent use cases like supply chain security, image verification. It also helps implementing multi-tenancy and tenant isolation. So the title of this presentation is Top 10 Kiverno Features, and we are going to start with the shooting favorite top five. So let to you. Yeah, sure. So there's really no programming language required when you write a Kiverno policy. And as Charles mentioned, we, the typical use case is around validation to enforce your security post posture of your cluster. We have the automation through mutation policies, and you can automate the generation of the multi-tenancy environments. And you can even also schedule the removal of your Kubernetes resources. And another interesting one is around securing the software supply chain, which is through our integrated image verification policy. We have the support for both cosign and notary. Another great addition to have is the external data lookup. So you can do it, fetch it through the API server directly or through any of the services that is running in your cluster. And the most exciting one is the Kiverno Chainsaw, which is a testing framework that we developed recently, um, which improves our integrated unit tests as well as E2E testing in Kiverno. So those are my top five. Um, how about you, Shao? So my top five are on the slides, but not in this particular order. We had to choose an order for the presentation. So I think one of the great possibilities with Kiverno is to apply policies outside of a cluster. Uh, in a CI-CD pipeline, for example, to validate that the pull request you are about to merge is not going to violate the rules you define in your policies. So it's really um, up in the chain. It's before the code is even merged in your main branch. And yeah, this is extremely useful. Um, the Kiverno reporting system is also extremely useful to quickly 
uh, have an overview of the violating resources in your cluster, what is good, what is wrong, what is correct, what can be improved, and it helps a lot working with teams to get um, more secure workloads or more reliable workloads. Um, the recent addition of policy exceptions helps a lot in this area. Uh, you can have policy exceptions completely decoupled from your policies and from your resources to allow temporarily a resource to violate a certain set of rules. And this way, at some point when everything has been fixed, you can delete the exception and if the violation comes back, it will show up. Um, in 1.12, we are adding new features to um, support match conditions at the policy level and to, this allows filtering resource that will be sent to the webhook by the API server in a very fine-grained manner. So it makes the, um, the webhook mechanism more reliable and more uh, performant and in the same spirit we now can generate validating admission policies directly from Kiverno policies. So everything happens at the API server level for better performance and better reliability. Uh, shooting, do you want to talk about other projects? And Sure, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Caverno family. Um, we have the Caverno playground. The idea is originated from the need of showcasing Caverno without a running Kubernetes cluster. It's easier for collaboration and troubleshooting. And we have policy reporter, a big shout out to Frank over there. He donated the entire project to Caverno, which helps visualize the violations. And you can send notifications to the configured targets like Elasticsearch, um, Grafana Loki, Slack, and so on. Um, two more exciting projects, Caverno JSON allows you to apply Caverno policies anywhere, and Caverno Chainsaw, we just mentioned, um, which is built on top of Caverno JSON to allow declarative A2E tests in Kubernetes. So there's always more to tell, but um, you know, we're short on time and shall we to meet us. Yeah, sure. So it's all about community. So thank you for joining. You can join us on Slack. We have a booth in the project pavilion, so you can come and talk to us at the Kiverno booth. And we also participate in the country fest on Friday. So don't hesitate to join and open your first pull request on one of our projects. That's it. Merci beaucoup.